Democrats and Republicans in the U.S. Congress are nowhere near a plan to avert 1.2 trillion U.S. dollars in spending cuts about two weeks before they're set to begin. And to talk more with us about the U.S. economy and Asia is Leon Pereira of Spire Research and Consulting. Uh, morning, Leon. Uh, so will the fiscal fights in Washington damage the economy? Well, there's no doubt that the fiscal cliff is the biggest single danger facing the U.S. economy now. It's casting a long shadow on the U.S. economy. And two events really underline the damage that this can cause. The economic slowdown in Q4 was largely due to a drop-off in government spending. And quarter-on-quarter, -quarter, GDP growth uh, was uh, basically flat. The other thing that you can look at is retail sales, which dropped to about 0.1% in January, again basically flat because of the expiry of the payroll taxes. So both of these things are really related to the fiscal cliff. Spire's perspective is that on balance, Republicans and Democrats will work out a partial compromise and a partial kicking of the can down the road to avoid the full impact of sequestration. But there is a uh, small chance, a minority chance, that sequestration will actually kick in. They'll fail to do this. The chairman of the House Budget Committee, Paul Ryan, who was a Republican vice presidential candidate last year, he's actually said now that sequestration will kick in. So that's a significant risk. But on balance, we feel that the U.S. economy will probably dodge the bullet of sequestration through another kicking the can down the road compromise. All right. Can American companies deliver strong profit growth even if the economy does gain strength? Not really. I think the problem facing the U.S. economy is not just the fiscal cliff, which is the biggest danger, but also basic consumer caution. Consumers are not spending. Consumer spending drives the U.S. economy. It's 70 percent of GDP. And the reason consumers are not spending is very simple. It's because unemployment is still stuck at about 7.9 uh, percent. So in that sort of a climate, it's hard for companies to wring profits out of the economy. Two groups of companies, uh, U.S. companies, will do quite well in terms of profits. One are uh, those that are invested overseas, getting a lot of their revenue from exports or from overseas sales. And the other is the uh, companies connected to the construction sector, as there is a real recovery in the housing market going on in the U.S. right now. Uh, so you don't sound optimistic that the uh, unemployment rate is going to fall through the 6.5% threshold? No, I don't think that's uh, going to happen anytime soon. It's in the nature of quantitative easing that it takes, its, uh, it takes time to make its effects felt. One estimate from the president of the Chicago Fed recently was that it would be 2015 uh, before the 6.5% unemployment was hit. Our perspective inspires that at the earliest it will be 2014 before we get 6.5% uh, unemployment. But the good news is that the Fed will continue to ease until that is hit, provided inflation doesn't cross 2.5%. And that is one of the few pieces of good news, one of the few things lifting up the U.S. economy right now. It badly needs that. All right, uh, let's take a look at Japan. The yens dropped about 8% against the dollar so far this year and slumped to 10% against the euro. Is a uh, currency war looming? Well, I don't think there will be a currency war looming for two reasons. One is that there was a recognition that the yen was overvalued uh, prior to this. Uh, it, it, it's dropped actually a, a great deal uh, since September, but it was overvalued prior to that. The second and more important reason is that what this yen depreciation does is it boosts Japan's exports. That's not really a mortal danger to most of the economies in the G7 or the G20. It primarily affects a few economies, uh, mainly Germany and South Korea, which compete head-on with uh, Japan in certain export categories like automotives and industrial products. It isn't really a huge danger to the other economies. So on balance, I think what has happened is that the G7 have pressured Japan to rein in this yen depreciation. And at the same time, I think the G20 uh, will produce a statement uh, in a few days' time from their meeting in Moscow which reassures markets that there will not be a currency war and yet this uh, depreciation will not continue uh, for the yen in at the same pace. All right, Japan's quarterly GDP shrank 0.1% of the fourth quarter. Can uh, uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe overcome deflation and recession in the first half of this year? Well, I think Japan is looking at very weak growth. I don't think they will completely overcome uh, deflation and uh, they will probably dodge the bullet of recession. Uh, you'll see a growth that is very close to flat. Uh, what is happening with this yen depreciation is that the Japanese establishment has uh, gone back to its traditional reflex of trying to export its way out of a downturn and that's basically what the yen uh, depreciation does. But I don't think that is going to be uh, a really successful strategy right now because of global weakness. I don't think there's an export path to 
strong growth. So on balance, there will be weak growth uh, for Japan in the first half of this year. Right, the Bank of Korea meets later today. Uh, investors staying on the sidelines there at the moment. Do you expect an interest rate cut? We don't think there will be an interest rate cut coming out of today's meeting. It's true that the Koreans are hurting somewhat from the yen depreciation because uh, when the won strengthens against the yen as it has, it hurts Korean exports and things like ICT and automotives and uh, industrial products. But on balance, industrial production is still growing, exports are still growing, so we don't think the Bank of Korea will actually impose a rate cut uh, right now. Um, last year, the Indian economy grew by 6.2%. Do you think the country can recapture some of the magic of uh, 2004 to 2008 when uh, average growth was at 8.5%? I think there's no doubt that going by economic fundamentals, India can return to that uh, rate of growth. Uh, it's justified by the fundamentals, uh, but it won't return to that rate of growth this year. And there are two reasons for that. One is inflation and the other is politics. Uh, and they're both connected together. This is a year when there are going to be nine state elections. Next year, 2014, we'll see parliamentary elections. In that climate, the government will be cautious about overreaching on growth for fear of uh, runaway inflation. Inflation uh, has actually just hit double digits, over 10%, because of the central bank's uh, rate cut uh, last month. So inflation is something that affects uh, the masses of rural dwellers in India where the vote banks lie. Growth is something that appeals more to urban dwellers, to the middle class. So in this current climate, the Indian government will not be so strongly or so boldly uh, uh, pro-growth and will not be doing all the measures that they need to return India to that uh, 8%. All right, last question for you then, uh, Leon. Is the Indian government under political pressure to unveil a growth-oriented budget on February 28th for the next fiscal year? I think their concern will lie more with uh, inflation, which is now double-digit, uh, rather than growth uh, because of political considerations. Uh, however, one interesting point is that this will be the first budget that will have the fingerprints of Raghuram uh, Rajan, who took up the post of the chief economic advisor to the Ministry of Finance in September. He's, of course, a brilliant and well-known economist. He used to be at the University of Chicago. So uh, there's every reason to believe that this budget may, uh, will have some interesting measures that uh, will be pro-growth without uh, creating a downside risk for inflation that would be politically unacceptable. All right. Well, thanks very much indeed for your insight, Leon. That was Leon Pereira of Spire Research and Consulting, and that's a business wrap from me.